Hello there, here with a video because today it is an anniversary. Yes, big, big anniversary today because Keith Richards is 80 years old. Can you believe Keith Richards is 80 year old? No, I don't think anyone can, but happy birthday, Keith. But that's not what we're here for this video for today, even though it's arguably the bigger anniversary today. But it's another one, it's a three year anniversary today. It was on this day, three years ago in 2020, that this came out, McCartney 3. December 18th, 2020 assuming that I get this video up in time on December 18th. Otherwise, it's been and gone, but never mind. It's the three year anniversary of McCartney 3. And I thought I'd do a little quick video. I haven't got an iPad or anything like that like I normally do. So this is the first time I've gone off script, off, off whatever the term is in a long time. Um, so yeah, we'll just see what I really end up rambling on about here. So. McCartney 3, anyway, like I say, this was Paul's COVID album. It came out during the pandemic. Uh, he recorded it during the first lockdown in like, I think it was from April, May, June 2020, he recorded most of this. Although bits of it have been lingering around for a few years, so some of it's from a few years back. Um, and when it came out, this album got a lot of praise and I'll link my proper review. Uh, that I did at the time in the description and I gave it a good review and I stand by most of what I said in that video I still think three years on this is a really good album and it's one of Paul's better albums I wouldn't say it's his best album or even in his top five or anything like that but it is a good solid album um, now like I say this album uh, it came out during Covid so I don't think we were in lockdown at the time because I seem to remember the day it came out I went to HMV and I bought that copy there, which is a blue copy, blue vinyl. Uh, and the only other colour variant I own is this one of Paul's store, which is the red version, which also came out that day. It was limited edition, hand numbered and stuff. With that back cover, which I really like. I wish that had been the front cover, to be honest. But um, yeah, otherwise, since I've done that review, I mean, goodness me. There's been plenty of editions of this released on every single colour you can imagine under the sun. Yeah, I mean, MPL, Capital Records have really, really milked McCartney 3 for everything they can get out of it. And even this week, we've had the McCartney 3x3, I think it's called, edition, which is basically a three-year anniversary edition of McCartney 3, which, you know, it's basically, it's, it's a cash grab. That's all it is. I mean, if you want to buy it and you have bought it, I hope you get satisfaction out of it, but to me, no, it's a cash grab. Um, but I just think, you know, a lot of this album, for me, it's kind of been given a little bit of a sour taste in my mouth because of how much, I don't know if it's MPL, I think it's maybe Capital Records, has really, really milked this album in the last three years with all these colour variants. And then there was the reimagined version which came out, I think, was that April 21 that came out? I didn't buy that. I don't own it. I've listened to it once or twice, but, yeah, not really any reason to care for it. I listened to it. There's some all right stuff on it, but... Yeah, I do think, personally, since Paul has gone back to Capitol Records, it's just all been downhill, really. I mean, all right, we had Egypt Station. They fairly milked that, especially with that collector's edition thing. Or was it traveler's edition? The big suitcase thing, like a 1,000 quid. Uh, and then this has been even worse. The amount of coloured variants, it's absolutely ludicrous. And there's nothing additional on it. It's just literally different colour dice or vinyl or whatever. <clears throat> Ridiculous. The archive editions have all just more or less stopped. I mean, compare what we've had since Paul went back to Capital to what we had before when Paul was on his last label, which was, was it here Music, I think he was on? Yeah. Now, we do know Paul is working on a new album. Um, and I'm excited for it. He's working with the guy who has produced the Stones latest album, whose name is I've now completely forgot. Um, but yeah, he's working with him at the minute. So hopefully next year, 2024, we will be getting a new McCartney album. But, you know, I mean, hopefully they don't milk it as much as McCartney 3. And hopefully Paul will actually acknowledge it because on his concerts recently, I mean, nothing, nothing from this album is in the set. I'm just like, Paul, do you not like this album or something? Because your record label's milking it for every penny they can get out of it, but yeah. But anyway, that's enough rantiness about how MPL have milked it. Because the album itself, despite all that, is still a solid album, I think. Now, of the three McCartney albums, so that's McCartney 1970, McCartney 2 in 1980, and this one, McCartney 3 2020, 
I would personally say that McCartney 2 is the best. It's my favourite one. Uh, um, it's the most wacky. It's the most out there one. Uh, this one is probably more like the first McCartney album, but it's probably the most commercial of the three, this one. I imagine for a lot of people they would argue this is their favourite um, of the three McCartney albums, but, you know, I'd say it's McCartney 2 personally, but we're all entitled to our choices. Uh, in terms of this album itself, how much I've listened to it in the last three years, well, when it first came out I listened to this album a lot, but since then I haven't listened to it all that much. There is time to time where I've thought, I'll have a listen to McCartney 3 today, but I couldn't tell you the last time I listened to this album start to finish, although just before I've done this video, I have actually just, when I was out for a walk to Sainsbury's, had a listen to this album, so, yeah, just to re-familiarise myself with it, and, yeah, it was good, still a good album, I just, yeah, it's just one of those things that I don't really reach for that much, because, I don't even know why I don't reach for it that much, I just, I don't know if I've just heard it enough for now. Yeah, uh, but in terms of the tracks, I think for the most part, the tracks are pretty good. Long-Tailed Winter Bird's a really good opening track. Find My Way's a good song. Pretty Boys is a good song. Uh, Deep Deep Feeling, I know that's quite a divisive song. Uh, personally, I think it's quite a good song. I really enjoy Deep Deep Feeling. Uh, Kiss of Venus, I think it's great. That one, Kiss of Venus, is probably the one that could have been a McCartney classic had he recorded it maybe 30, 40 years ago. In fact, Kiss of Venus is very similar to something that you'd hear on the first McCartney album, maybe something like Junk or something. Um, one of the best tracks, Sea is the Day is great, and the closing track, Winter Bird, When Winter Comes, is great. Although, the closing track, you know, a lot of people will argue that's their favourite on the album, and one of the reasons for that will be because it was recorded in the 90s, so Paul's voice isn't as old. It sounds a bit more like the traditional Paul McCartney voice we all know and love. So that was nice to have to close this album. A bit of old school Paul with something that sounds like it belongs on the first McCartney album. And if this had been his last album, then Winter Bird, When Winter Comes, would have been a good way to close his last album. But we know there's another one on the way at some point. Uh, in terms of the tracks that I haven't mentioned, Women and Wives, Lavatory Lil, Slide In, and Deep Down, I, I don't really care for them. Deep Down, it, it's far too long. It's like six minutes. It could have been two minutes and you've, you know, had enough. Uh... Women and Wives, I don't like Paul's voice on it. I know some people have said it sounds like a later day Johnny Cash song and Paul has even said it's his favourite on the album. But I'm sorry, it's my least favourite. I don't like it. Uh, Lavatory Lil, it's, it's annoying. Sliding, don't really care for sliding. But, you know, McCartney 3, you know, I mean, you can tell I haven't got a script here, can't you? Um, three years, I mean, it's quite mad to think this album's three years old, but hopefully this three-year anniversary edition that has come out will be the last thing now of McCartney 3. We can finally move on to something else. Maybe they'll give us what we actually want, like an archive, uh, London Town, Back to the Egg, or a new Paul album, or something interesting like that. Not another coloured fucking variant of McCartney 3. But nevertheless, happy third anniversary of McCartney 3. If for some reason you've never heard this album, give it a listen. It is a good album. Um, yeah. And that's all I've got to say, so thank you very much for watching, and I will see you very, very soon. Goodbye, have a nice Christmas.